Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter four talking about defect management and moving to the last topic of this chapter that is 4.4, assessing process capability with defect report information. As you remember, earlier in our previous sessions, we have discussed that defect report can actually be very crucial in order to determine the process improvement and ideas to add more value to capabilities of your process in the development as well as testing. Now, how exactly that happens and how exactly an organization can make use of this information to add value or determine which areas need information. In nutshell, let me just tell you a few of the things which might be very clear for anyone to understand. Now, the number one thing is when we basically report a defect, a development team has to work on it. And uh, generally, they try to debug the script and uh, get into the root cause and resolve the issue. Now, when they resolve the issue, they are subjected to let us know or let the defect report know that what was the main root cause of it. Now, basically, the root cause can tell you a lot about the process improvements or the areas which are weak. For example, I found a defect during system testing and I reported to that uh, the development team and the development team started conducting the RCA and at the RCA they found that it was actually a design misunderstanding okay or maybe it was a third-party design interface which was integrated with our application now from this root cause of course we could resolve it but we do understand that when we were doing the review of the design phase we should have analyzed these defects now cost of fixing the defect is basically measured in these terms stating that what you have should have found during that activity which you conducted much earlier has leaked this defect into a later life cycle point and of course causing you to pay more to fix the defect. Now that's where root causes and many other relevant information which you gather from the defect report can be very helpful to determine, uh, determine the improvement ideas or as well as determining the weaker areas or activities which need to be optimized further in order to identify better defects at the right time. So of course you were conducting review but in case you could not find it and you later found it much later in the life cycle then it is actually expensive to resolve and your review was not effective or I can say that it was not successful. So that's where we basically try to say that a defect report information can be collected in such a way that it can be helpful to determine which areas need improvement and optimizations at any point of time. That's what we're trying to explore a little more here that how exactly this can be done and what could be the best details which you can capture from a defect report in order to do that. Now as discussed earlier defect reports can be useful for project status, monitoring and reporting. While the process implication of matrices are primarily addressed in the expert level syllabus, so right now we are not going to discuss about the matrix implications here, but in the test manager syllabus, uh, at this advanced level syllabus, the test manager should be aware of what defect report means and uh, in terms of assessing the capability of the testing and the overall software development process. In addition to the test progress monitoring information, which we have actually discussed in as a part of our chapter two, defect information needs to support process improvement initiatives. So at any point of time, you can apply that example, which I just shared to you and start you know, relating whatever we'll be understanding right now. So examples include using the phase of introduction, detection and removal information on a face by face basis to assess phase containment that means how many defects you could found in the same phase where it was actually introduced and suggest ways to improve defect detection effectiveness in each phase now assume that you were conducting a review of your requirements and you did identify a lot of defects at that same point of time now of course you will keep account of these defects which you have identified during the requirement review phase and uh, you know, this will basically give you a count that how many defects you could actually identify with uh, the process of defect containment, which basically says that you found the defect in the same phase where it was introduced. So that basically reduces your cost of fixing the defect, or I can say that that's the minimum cost which is involved in fixing a defect. So this could be one of the relevant way by which you can actually say that which part or which reviews or which process or which activity is resulting in better outputs. 
Similarly, the second one is using the phase of introduction information for para to analysis or phase in which the largest number of defects are introduced to enable, uh, to enable targeted improvements to reduce the total number of defects. Now that's another way to do it by gathering the information of the phase where most of the defects are being introduced. I can actually work upon that why these phase are having a lot of defects when being uh, introduced at that point of time. So probably assume that you get a lot of defects uh, when it comes to uh, the design interface from a third party software. Then that means that clearly means that your third party interface or APIs or web services are not matching or meeting the expectations what you want to have from them. So you can actually set up strict guidelines or set up certain SLAs to you know make them fulfill your need and expectation or before you accept their uh, web services or external third party softwares. Third, using the defect root cause information to determine the underlying reasons for defect introduction to enable process improvement that reduces the total number of defects. So that is another information which I was just talking about as an example to you, uh, beginning of the tutorial, that root cause information plays a vital role in determination of uh, the process improvement and ideas to add more value. Next, uh, using the phase of introduction, detection, and removal information to perform cost of quality analysis. Now, cost of quality is the overall project's cost for fixing the defect. Now, of course, you may have found around 500 defects in a particular project or maybe more than that. Now, how many of them were phase containment? You take a call, count of that. And how many of them were find just next phase? How many have found uh, maybe after two phases and so on. So you keep up a ratio of all these things and then you basically calculate your cost of quality to determine that how much exactly we could have saved in order to come up with this particular product at the end of the day. And definitely that can be done with help of the uh, phase of introduction, detection and removal information about the defect report. Last but not the least, of course, using defect component information to perform defect cluster analysis to better understand technical risk, which can be basically used for the risk-based testing and to enable re-engineering of troublesome components. Now, of course, when you tag the particular feature or component with which a particular defect is associated with, you can actually populate the information or graphical representation that which components had maximum number of defects, which can basically showcase the defect clustering there and also can tell you that where generally your defects are getting accumulated and why is that so? Is that like it is the most complex thing or is it more about the risk associated with that? So what kind of uh, measures in future we can take about similar type of uh, components and is there anything which is lacking from our development team in order to implement that? So we are getting a lot of defect in that component. So we should just try to gather all that uh, necessary information associated with the component and try to make sure that everything meets the expectation. And if there's anything else we can do in order to reduce the count of defect, it is really good. So that's very important to be analyzed in order to increase the capability and maturity model of your process. Now, of course, this can be seen. Uh, in our upcoming chapter where we'll be talking about all of these like capability maturity of the test process. So we will be getting into a deeper dive of that. So just wait for the upcoming chapter to talk about the same. Further to add, of course, uh, in some cases, uh, the teams may elect not to track defects found during some or all of the software development lifecycle. While this is often done, in name of efficiency and for the sake of reducing process overhead because of course it requires a lot of uh, time to analyze all the information and dedicated people to analyze these issues and get to the root causes and really understand that was that the same thing or not because if in case it was just an anomaly uh, due to misunderstanding then of course these defects can be eliminated but doing the appear analysis of that and then determining that was that really uh, important to be called as a defect and was that really a typical mistake by any individual or any particular team or any particular face uh, to consider that as a part of improvement. But a lot of time you do see that no it was just an ignorance or it was just a casual uh, you know misunderstanding or it was due to something which cannot be actually avoided. So you just try to filter them up in further categories to determine so but here what we are saying is that you need dedication and time to do that job. So if in case your organization is having a team which is established only to do this process improvement part, then it's good. 
But if in case your organization does not have enough resources to do this job, sometime you can actually excuse this part to do the analysis. Now, it, in reality, it generally reduces visibility into the process capability of testing and software development. So, of course, if you don't do that, then it will result into invisibility and uh, it will reduce the ideas for growing up with your process and being more mature. Putting it all together, this makes the improvement suggested above difficult to carry out due to lack of reliable data. So that could be the outcome which you can observe from if in case not analyzed with the resources and the defect information. Well, I recommend everyone to take care of the defect report details and gather all necessary information what may be required at any point of time to improvise your process and in order to make it more strong and mature at any point of time. Well, that's what you call a test test process. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.